I'm Iman. I'm Mizan. And welcome back to another video in the series of converting our patio to a three season multi purpose room. In our last video, we cut and installed this foam insulation below our subfloor. And we used a special method of just installing shelves like these ones under the foam insulation to hold it up. In this video, we're going to actually be installing the subfloor, the plywood subfloor in our three season multi purpose room. And we have to make sure that the floor is, of course, very sturdy because we want to put some very heavy exercise equipment on it. So, Zami, you want to be the tester of how sturdy this floor looks? So, as you can see, our floor is super sturdy. And now what we're going to do is we're going to install all the plywood uh, sheets on the entire floor. Uh, of course, with these ones, we have to put the foam insulation, but this one right here, today I'm going to show you how we install the plywood sheathing on this section right here. Alright, so me and Zami are going to first place the plywood sheathing into the section. And then my mom's going to come in and hold it in this place. Okay, you got it. Alright. Alright, Matt. So my mom's gonna hold the plywood sheathing up while I install the caulk. And talking about caulk, the, part, the purpose of the caulk is mainly to adhere the, uh, actually, we have the caulk right here. The purpose of it is to adhere the plywood sheathing, the bottom of it, to the joists. And this is multiple reasons. One of them is that if you put adhesive on, in between the joists and the sheathing, or the subfloor, you can fill any cracks or any spaces. And by filling in those gaps, you, um, you reduce the amount of the floor bouncing or the floor squeaking. Most people uh, prefer uh, polyurethane uh, adhesive or just regular caulk. All right, my dad wants, to, me, wants me to clarify that when I say caulk, I'm actually talking about adhesive, not the caulk that we use to seal like windows and stuff like that. That caulk is just you know sealant. But what I'm talking about here is adhesive, which is you know used to make things stick together, which caulk doesn't really do as well. But anyway, some people use uh, heavy duty wood glue actually to adhere the uh, subfloor to the joists. In our case, we can't do that because we have tape uh, in between the subfloor and the joists. So it's not gonna work for us, but actually that's an intentional design of uh, my dad's whole, uh, whole design here. The reason why he put uh, eBay tape here is because if there is some something messed up with the floor. He wants to be able to uh, take out the floor and not have to like you know rip it if it's like adhered. Uh, oh. So if we used heavy duty wood glue, what would happen is that it would, it would stick right to the joist and it would be hard to pull out. But in their case, in our case, we're going to use a special adhesive that is um, for uh, subfloor adhesion. This one's Loctite right here, but they also have things like. Uh, liquid nails, and I'm not sure exactly how they're supposed to be specifically for subfloors, but I guess just to be safe, we're going to use this one. Alright, alright, so here's the caulk gun. It's not caulk, we're using adhesive, but it's called the caulk gun. And I mentioned this in the last video, if you are installing plywood, make sure you cut the plywood to fit uh, whatever you need to, like this post has that cutout down there. Make sure you cut that before you install any of the foam so that you don't have to do any measurements while you're on the phone, which might break it. Anyway, the purpose of this caulk is to fill in the gaps, like I said earlier, and I, I recommend that you work on it from the outside inward so that you don't have to like bend over any caulk. So let's start on the inside. And we, have, we wanna make sure that they're all in line or under the, um, the subfloor. So what I mean by this is don't put any on the outside, put them on the inside. And we're going to put them right above, the, right on the joists. So when my dad was doing it earlier, he was trying to uh, do a bit of a squiggly line, like a zigzag. But uh, <laughs> I don't have very steady hands. So, I'm just going to go with a straight line. Okay. So, 
So we have the back side in. Uh, it's a bit messy, but you know, it's my first time kind of doing side pieces. Now we're going to go down the um, lengthwise, and then we're going to finally do this last outside. Try doing a, a zigzag here. But like like I said earlier, this is meant to fill cracks. So we want to make sure that we get as even of an application as we can, just in case there's any cracks alongside here. In our case, we have eBay tape, so we might not have many cracks to fill, but you get the idea. Alright, I put the adhesive down. As you can see, it's very messy, not very straight. I can never be a surgeon, but uh, now we're going to, now we're going to put the uh, cheese in that. All right, thank you. Okay, so put that in. All right, put it in first position. Slide it in. Okay, I'm going to be the first one to let it go. Azami has some um, foam there so that it doesn't crush his fingers. This is 70 pounds. I'm going to let it go first. And then I'm just going to let it go. Yeah, and then we're going to push it into place. You're going to use a hammer to knock it into, I guess, a flush, as flush as we can get. So as you can see right here, the plywood is super warped. Up here it's sticking out, so you gotta be careful about that because I guess the plywood is not high quality. All right, so we have our sheathing down. We have it spaced out using these nails on each side of the plywood. And we even have a nail here because my, my dad pre-measured it. I can't, I'm not sure if you can see that line there. And the next step is we're going to secure it using screws. Before we do that, we'll talk about just the plywood sheathing itself. So this is plywood sheathing or subfloor or some, it's sometimes called sheathing, but it's subfloor. But um, usually you're supposed to install it with the um, this this information facing the bottom, so that the inspector can see it from the crawl space. In our case, we're not going to do that. We're going to install it with the best side facing up, and that's so that we don't have to fill in all these little knots and holes with uh, wood filler or wood plastic. Uh, you know, because we need to fill, on, fill in all those holes to make, make sure it looks nice and also to maintain strength. But, in our case, we're just going to install with the best side facing up. You know, that whole thing with choosing the side that looks best is actually the reason that some people don't even use plywood sheathing for the subfloor. Most people, or I guess people increasingly, use OSB, which is Oriented Strand Board or Particle Board. And the reason why is because, well, if you just look at OSB, it doesn't really have any knots to fill. So it saves on the amount of time and the amount of money that you spend on using wood plastic or wood filler to fill in knots. By the way, this is uh, called stamps. They're facing down when you install them for the inspector, but in our case, it doesn't matter. When you install plywood sheathing, you need to account for the fact that wood expands, and that's why we left these spacers. So um, it says right here that um, these wood, these plywood sheets are sized for spacing, which, you know, take it for a grain of salt, but these are sized so that when you place them down, you have a bit of a space between them. Uh, and you want to make sure that you have that space so that they can expand. And uh, this is three eighths inch thick plywood. Oh, three fourths inch thick plywood. This is three fourths inch thick plywood. And the thickness of your uh, sheathing actually depends on the span between your joists. So if um, the span between your joists is 16 inches, as we have here, actually the minimum is a half inch uh, thickness for your uh, sheathing. However, if it's like so, say like 24 inch spans, the minimum is actually uh, 3 fourths of an inch. In our case, we're using 3 fourths of an inch even though the minimum is 1 half because we're installing heavy gym equipment in here. So we need to make sure that the floor is strong and sturdy. Another thing about the thickness is that you want to make sure that you also think about your thickness based on the flooring that you're using. If you're using like laminate flooring, you're not going to want to use a thinner 
subfloor because that's not going to be as strong. But if you're using something like hardwood, which is much more stronger, then you can you then you can consider using a thinner subfloor. And last thing to talk about is pricing. Back in December when we bought this, you can actually watch a video of me and Azami carrying these plywood sheets back in December. were $60 a piece. Very expensive, I know. But now, these are actually, these plywood sheets are $100 a piece. Uh, and compare that to OSB, which today is about $70 a piece for the same size sheet. So if we were ordering the plywood sheets like nowadays, we would probably be getting OSB instead of plywood because, you know, $70 is $30 less than $100. Which is still a bit more than the $60 that we originally bought it for. Right, Zami? He's a mathematician, he knows. I can confirm that 70 is less than 100 and 60 is less than 70. Exactly. So now we're going to fasten the sheets to the joists. And of course, if you look at the fasteners that we have here, you want to make sure that they're in line with the joists. You want to make sure that you put um, screws six inches apart. They don't have to be exactly six inches. They can be around six inches. It's not like the inspector is going to look at something and see you five and a half inches and they're going to tell you to rip apart the whole floor. But just make sure it's about that much.